So this is the water tap. So the, the room was completely filled with water and I dived from over there all the way here and I tried to close the tap but it was, it was already closed so that was not the problem. So I went out again and uh, completely black of the oil. Welcome on board of the 47 meter long canal barge Le Maître Sonneur and the Beauty of Life. This is the story of how I became the musician in the life of my dreams and how this dream made me the musician I ever wanted to be. You need more to become a musician than only practicing scales and arpeggios on your instrument. Come and join us as we take to the extraordinary of life of creativity. If you enjoy this video, please subscribe or like. It's a great way to support our channel. Skype lessons in confinement is a discovery for the students but also for the teachers. I was already teaching online before the corona lockdown. But now, I teach all my students without seeing them. It's not easy, but quite fast I discovered the ease of it. Just to name one, no driving or parking the car at conservatorium. I must say I discovered a big independent attitude from the pupils. I still prefer to be live together in a room, play and feel the music, but I must admit that the results online are astonishing. Here is an example of one hour Skype lesson reduced to five minutes. The first lesson I have today is with Amy Muriel. Hi Amy! How are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine. So, what are we going to do? What? Yeah, uh, so I feel like Bach is like Mount Everest and that I just need to climb it, even if I'm going to climb it slowly. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. actually not what I meant to do. I meant to take it slower and, and more calmly. When you think about the notes in the learning process, you are in this think mode, you know, the, the one part of your brain. If you go to the other part of your brain, then you are more playing with uh, your feelings, your emotions and your subconscious mind is also active at that moment. So the only thing uh, you can have is the benefit of you're working when you stop thinking. Now, when you play for me, you think, oh, <laughs> I really want to show, <laughs> I want to show the best of myself and, and blah, blah, blah. And then you're thinking again, what is the closest uh, 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 way to be that close to your feelings? I think, in my opinion, that is singing. So when you sing inside, you forget to think about the notes. <laughs> Yeah, very good. You see, I, I can feel now that you are playing music. I can feel that you stop playing notes. And I, in my opinion, that is the most important thing to know as a musician. When you play notes, you're just playing the notes. And as perfect as you can get them, 
they will always stay notes. You understand what I mean? And if you really want to, to say something, it only can be possible with your in, inner voice, with the singing inside of your body. And you did it just right now. Was it easier for you to play? It was. And the, actually the only thought that came by was just that um, saw, zigzag motion um, yeah. getting back to the right place, but it was a pleasant kind of thinking. It was more of a, <laughs> like a kind of a dance. There are no miracles. If you don't study your notes, if you don't have them in your fingers, you will not be able to play anything. So it is only at this stadium of your, of your process, now that you know the notes, now that you have them in your fingers, try to let them go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we play this one? each other as soon as possible okay. and take care you too thank you Didier. see you next time bye 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 today is kefir day about twice a week we make our own homemade slightly sparkling lemonade just like the yogurt kefir, this is a water-based fermented drink, the cousin of the kombucha. Kefir culture dies in contact with metal, so you need to use plastic tools to handle it. This is the kefir culture, also known as Japanese crystal. Beside the fact that it tastes extremely good, the kefir is very good for our intestinal flora. Mm. Terrific! You can put all fruits you want. My preference is with lemon and figs. For one liter, take 100 gram kefir culture and 80 grams cane sugar. Don't use honey. This will kill the kefir culture because of its antibioticum effect. It takes about two days for the kefir to eat all the sugar. But you can leave it one or two more days, the taste will get only stronger. Due to the fermentation, lactobacilli and carbodioxides are created, so be sure to have a strong fixed stop if you don't want your kitchen to be spread with lemonade and sugar sticky after some days. There was apparently absolutely no way I could realize one of the biggest dreams of my life. Everyone was trying to persuade me that artists don't earn that kind of money. But I was very stubborn, didn't take a no for an answer and didn't stop before my dream was realized. Where there is seemingly no way, there is always a way. Now I live in my dream house, <laughs> boat.
cargo boat. Well, it was a big dream when I was a when I was a child. I was dreaming of living on a boat. I didn't know if it was going to be a sailing boat or a barge. But when I was 21, I was working in Antwerp uh, in a theater. There was a big, huge window, and through that window you could see the the river, the Schelde. And every day, some barge were passing by and I thought hmm. it took about 10 years before I could buy a boat because in the beginning I was playing on the street so I didn't have the money for buying a boat so I bought finally I found a boat after searching for I think I saw all the boats of Antwerp I went on every boat I was talking with every uh, skipper I was sailing with those with those men. The, I learned how to how to sail with uh, with those people that are living on their boat. It's it's a wonderful community actually. Very very friendly people, and they really live in another world. And uh, finally, I bought a boat. Very very old, rusty. There was nothing good about the boat actually. I did everything by myself. I learned how to, well, to do everything actually. I did, uh, and it was very good because in the in the beginning of my musical career, there were several weeks, sometimes months, when I didn't have one single concert, you know. And so instead of doing nothing and waiting for the concerts to come, I thought, okay, I'm going to create myself a job, no? And uh, and I worked on a boat and in the beginning there was a little cabin it was built with only organic <laughs> materials it was ideal actually without any luxury I didn't have heating I didn't have electricity I didn't have water so I, I used water from the canal I had a wooden stove for heating my bed was here my kitchen was there the table was there. There was a little musical corner there where I was playing music. It was actually quite cute. And I lived on uh, on that small little space for all those years that I, w I was working to fix the boat. What happened before you started building the boat? Hmm. Well, I was baptized. I I bought the boat and in that same week well I knew what I bought it was a very old rusty ship and I, I knew I needed to go somewhere to fix it otherwise uh, I would have problems so I prepared myself we had two days of navigation about 10 locks to go through and um, and the propeller should be underwater completely otherwise you you cannot stop because the brake of a ship is when you go backwards skippers when they when they have the same problem they let a little bit of water coming inside the boat in special compartments and then the boat uh, go do goes down a little bit about 20 centimeter or, or 40 centimeter just enough so that the propeller is completely underwater. So I did the same. I was a little bit nervous, mm -hmm. so I prepared everything and uh, and I came back from the grocery store, and my boat was completely into the water. The nose was in the air, and the back of the boat was completely under. So I was sinking. And um, well, I don't remember. I don't remember really being afraid at that moment. It was beginning of November, so the, the water was very cold. And uh, I went back to the machine room, and I, I saw the machine room was completely underwater. 
and I thought I did something wrong by letting the water in. You know, I didn't, I didn't close it enough so that water was still going in, or something like this. I didn't, I didn't know uh, what I did, what, what I did wrong. So <laughs> I took my clothes off, and I jumped into that water. Water was freezing, and I think I, I discovered then what adrenaline can do with <laughs> a human being because I didn't feel anything. I just uh, dived into that water. But before, uh, the day before, I just uh, changed the oil of the machine, of the engine. You know? And uh, so the oil was, was, was just in, in the machine room. Uh, so when the water came into the machine room, the oil was floating on the surface, you know. So when I dived into the water and came out, I was black, completely black from the oil. It was terrible. And I came out of the water. You know, it was really like in a film, you know, diving under under the machine, under the engine. And uh, nothing was wrong, actually, with the, the system. So I came out of the water, and there was a friend of mine was was there at that moment. And he told me, Didier, I think we need to call the, the fireman. fireman. And I thought, oh, no. But he did actually. He, he called the fireman. Fireman came ten minutes after, and then with when with those huge pump, they they pumped for about thirty minutes. I, I remember there were three pumps, and they were pumping one thousand liter per minute. Mm -hmm. You know, and they pumped for thirty minutes with three pumps, so you can count how much liter that was. And then the boat came out of the water, and. Um, and I remember there was a skipper, an old skipper, a very, very friendly man with his uh, cigarette, you know, and his, uh, his uh, yellow teeth. And, um, and he told me, Didier, now you listen to me. You need to work on your engine right away. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do and you have to do exactly what I tell you to do. Otherwise, your, your engine will be dead. So I did step by step I think I worked until early in the morning uh, a whole part of the night on the engine and uh, <laughs> I even was drying the, the starter you know the starter block with a, a hair dryer <laughs> and then in the morning about six o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning I started the engine I mm. Boom! It was a big um, uh, white uh, smog coming out uh, of the engine and uh, finally the engine started and I felt like like a king. I felt I felt like my life couldn't go worse than that, what I had and uh, it was you survived. I survived it and I was so proud of myself. And I remember afterwards that problems in life I got were never that hard, hard than, than that moment. And I remembered, so okay, now I can hel handle anything I want in my life. So this is the engine room. show you inside so this is the water tap the, the room was completely filled with water and I dived from over there all the way here and I tried to close the tap but it was it was already closed so that was not the problem so I went out again and uh, completely black of the oil
So the day after, we, when the engine was running, we uh, immediately went to the shipyard. And um, but we didn't have any brake because the boat was up again. And why did the boat uh, sunk? Because there were holes in the boat, but above the water level. So when I took the boat lower into the water, the water was coming inside. You see? But I didn't know that when I bought the ship. So I couldn't put water in the boat anymore for, for going. So when we entered a lock, we needed to throw the rope and we only had one chance and we had to hit the bollard and uh, and then with the bollard we could stop the boat inside the lock you can imagine what happens when you don't stop your boat then you just go further and you you hit the door from of the lock and then it's a uh, big 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 mis misery of course so finally after two days of navigation on the belgian canals and all those locks without any problem But we arrived and uh, I asked the shipyard man to look under the boat and <laughs> he told me that it was uh, completely, completely rusty, like a French um, Gruyere cheese. Mm -hmm. Millions of holes and he didn't understand how my ship was floating, actually. He went with a very, very big iron uh, brush. I remember it was like a machine. He cleaned the underside and actually all those holes were filled with algae and mud and, and a lot of things. So the ship was floating only because of that. So when he cleaned it up from the inside, you could see outside, you could see the light coming in. So I told him, okay, let's fix the whole boat. So he went all the 47 meters uh, with a new iron uh, pieces. And uh, now I had a completely new uh, mm -hmm. uh, bottom of the, of the boat. So now I cannot sink anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, why did I say that I was baptized? Because afterwards I came back to Antwerp and all those uh, skippers, they came to me. And they, they were uh, tapping on my shoulder like, okay, welcome to the club, club. now you're baptized. We all had one of that uh, experience once in our life. And then I worked many years. I fixed step by step. First, um, the kitchen and the, the bathroom and the living room and then I was still sleeping here and then one by one I did the bath uh, the sleeping rooms until now we have uh, four huh? one for for us and one for each each uh, child in the next episode of Le Maître Sonneur is the maintenance of a boat a lot of work? Meditation to improve my musical skills? And swimming in cold water? Uh, in the beginning it's a little cold, but after five minutes I don't feel anything anymore. And a very special thank you to our patrons. We really appreciate your help. Together we might save our world of the extinction of the need of art. <laughs> <laughs>